Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this flap over fun fold card. I've done them where the hinges come from the side, from the left, from the right. This time it comes from the top. So it flaps up and then it opens. I think the thing I like about fun folds like this is it sort of extends the suspense of getting in to see what the greeting is. You're making the recipient work for their delight. So this is the card. It's really quite easy. I'm going to show you how to make it and I will bring in the ingredients. So it's a piece of petal pink and it's eight and a half by five and a half and it will be scored at four and a quarter but I'm actually going to go through all the steps and show you how to do it from the beginning. There is a piece of designer series paper which is three and three quarters by four so if your paper doesn't have a particularly obvious pattern direction to it you might want to be careful when you come to put that on. There are two white pieces which are the same. So they're all three of them the same size. This is for the outside. The two white ones are for the inside. There is a little piece of designer series paper and this is one and a quarter by four, which goes at the top. I cut a circle out of the deckled circles. And I don't know, it's one, two, three, four, five. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the seventh one so just as long as it's big enough to hold the design that you wanted to hold i've cut a little banner out of stylish shapes that's going to be for the birthday and then these are just random pieces that i had so i'm going to be using the delightful floral designer series paper and if you have seen any of my videos before you know that uh, this is just a firm favorite of mine so there are all these lovely patterns but this sheet particularly is made for fussy cutting. So you can cut all the shapes out. And what I've done is I had cut a sheet of all the pieces down, but sometimes at the edges, well actually it's already gone, but here where it's not a full flower, I like to cut it and keep it so it can actually be used for sort of an inside greeting where it just needs to be a little piece and a little hint of the color and this little strip was just left over to be quite honest when i had cut this down so lots of little doodads i will share a funny little story with you i cut the i fussy cut the main body flower out and this is what it came out of and my grandma when she used to cut apples she used to cut the skin off apples and such she used to try to do it all in one long string and it was always a challenge of mine. My mum could do it too and my grandma always used to say, when you've got the piece of apple skin, you take it and you throw it over your shoulder and when you look at it on the ground behind you, it should show you the initial of the person's name that you're going to marry, which is just the funniest like old-fashioned story ever. But when I managed to do this, believe it or not, twice, I just thought I would share that little snippet with you. But anyway, on to the important things of getting our card made. So like I say, it's a piece of designer series paper and it's eight and a half by five and a half. And then for some reason, this piece got a little divot in it. I don't know if you can see that. So I just need to make sure that this is going to be the front. So it's scored at four and a quarter. But then what we need to do... I'll just move it up because I'm going to do it down at the bottom, is we need to cut from that score line down at one and a half inches. And the nice thing about a Stampin' Up! paper trimmer is it has one and a half inches on this side of the cutting trough. So it helps to support a lot of your paper. So I'm just going to line it up at one and a half. And then I'm going to find the score mark and I am going to put the paper cutter in and slice down to it. So we've got this piece from the score mark and like I say, I'm trying to make this be the front because it's going to be covered on both sides. And then we need to cut this piece off. So it's going to be the piece that is sort of missing out of here. And then of course it becomes the stick. So I cut mine on the paper trimmer 
but of course you can just cut it with, I'm going to do it down here. And I don't need to stand up to be able to see it because when I do that, it puts me awfully close to my camera. Then I always feel like I'm shouting. So if it's not necessary, so I've lined up the edge of the paper trimmer with this piece and I'm just going to cut it upward. And there you have it. So now the piece is missing. And what we need to do last but not least is line this up at a half an inch where everyone can see the measurements. So we line it up at half an inch and just score it. So it needs a little piece of a flap to fit down. So let me move the paper trimmer out of the way now. So I don't need to stand up and yell, none of that good stuff. So what we'll do is I will fold this over and give it a nice crease with the bone folder. And then we can go ahead and assemble all the pieces. Now this is going to be a flap and it's going to be a piece that moves. So the best thing would be to either stick it down with liquid glue or I'm actually going to use some of the tear and tape just on the little half inch flap. That's where it needs to be. So we'll put a piece at the top and a piece at the bottom. Like I say, you can use really strong adhesive or you can use the liquid glue. As long as you're going to make sure that it stays put, that's really the intent. So I'm just going to peel the backing off these two strips. Oh. All right, so fold that down. Then I'm going to eyeball the middle of this area. You can measure it if you want to, but I think I'm just going to be confident and... Stick it down on the edge. Give it a burnish with the bone folder. So now we've got a nice flap that lifts up. And then we just need to pop all the layers in. So the two white, I don't want to lose that little flower, that little leaf. So again, making sure that we've got it the right orientation, because if you put it that way, you've got the sides going to be too big. So we just need to quickly stick these two pieces in on the inside and that will decorate that. So do that one, that one on the other side and then we'll do the same with the designer series paper piece. making sure it's wider than taller. The widest part of it should go across and the slightly skinnier part will be this way. And then we will pop the other side of the paper, which has a lovely sort of flirty flamingo color to it. And then I am going to pop that up on the top so that's the card really as it stands i'm going to do a little bit of stamping now so i'm going to bring in the berry burst which is the dominant color in the big flower and the little banner like i said so i'm using two stamp sets i'm going to use simply said is going to say let's celebrate and then friends for life it will be happy birthday oh and also i've got the yay out of simply said to just because I felt it filled in a little bit where the flower was not covering the whole circle so we've got happy birthday so that's great we can pop let's celebrate inside and then when we've got the flower onto its circle we can then stick the yay in place so the little strip I am just going to pop that down here on the white just to fill that in a little bit. I'm going to bring in my silicone mat because I'm going to be gluing some edgy pieces and I don't want it to overrun and put sticky on my work surface. So that can just pop down there and that actually is 
the top of that same flower so it almost gives it a little bit of continuity and I think that would probably get pulled apart if I tried to do it with the rolling adhesive so I'm just going to put a little bit of the mono liquid glue on that one and stick it in the corner so that's the inside done now what we need to do is fasten this to the outside so oops. I won't get too hasty moving that out of the way just have to make sure the flowers don't go to the tippy edges if you're using the same paper because it will overhang and be awfully sticky so if we bring this down and more or less eyeball where it's going to be we know the orientation for the yay so i'm just going to ink that up quickly stamp that into place and actually i'm going to close the ink pad so i don't go putting something over there and sticking it to myself and then we just need to put a little bit of adhesive on the back of this greeting so it can span but again not to the edges because you don't want here to be sticky and then i'll bring them some dimensionals and we'll just put one two three and peel the backing off and then what i'll do is i will close the card down and then we can see where this would be centered into the designer series paper area. And there you have it. So it flaps up, it opens up. There's lots of busyness using a basically what are scraps because they can't be used on their own. But I think they just add a lovely little extra dimension to the inside of the card. And there are two the same. So if you like what you've seen, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. I always like thumbs up. All the directions and dimensions, as always, will be on my blog. So you can head on over there and have a look if you didn't, you know, remember what they were. I like to share them on my blog so you can more or less just sit back and relax and watch all of the videos. I am currently doing Festive Fridays. The holiday mini catalogue recently came out. And rather than turn all of my projects Christmassy or holiday winter oriented when it's not really quite there yet, I thought I would keep my Tuesday videos, my Technic Tuesdays, to being just general, still fabulous of course, just general colours and themes. And then on a Friday there will be a more holiday oriented one. So there you have it my loves. Thumbs up, please. Thank you so much. Subscribe, ring the bell, check back on Fridays as well as Tuesdays at the current moment. And last but not least, thanks so much for watching.